just take it a little bit, even though it looks like I just dunked a whole brush in, just the corner bits. And we start to mix them up in the direction that we came down, right? So we're gonna go up. If you came down like this with your knife, go up. Just tap down, come back up, tap down, come back up, tap down. All right, the more we go in, the more we start tapping out. Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did an 18 by 24 inch Liquitex recycled canvas and it came out fantastic. I show you every single step from ripping it out of the plastic to putting it up here onto the easel to finishing the painting all in under an hour. I can't wait to show you how to do it. I know you're excited to learn it. That's why you clicked on the link. So check the description down below. Make sure you get all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. Let's do it just like this. Holy mo, where did the canvas go? So I wanted to show you guys every single step today. And guess what I just found out? Liquitex recycled canvases are now like half what they used to be. So in the spirit of showing you every single step, I'm literally gonna take it right out of the package. We're gonna put it right up here on the easel and then we're gonna paint it. It's gonna be fantastic. So get ready to have some fun, right? That out there like that, come over here. Now, I love these Meaden easels. I don't know what you guys use. Some of you guys have made me have the Bob Ross easel. It was always too expensive for me. So I got the Meaden easel and they have a wide variety of easels that you can get. And this one's fantastic. And the link is probably down in the description. You can go find it down there. So let's see. The very first thing we're gonna need to do in order to do a painting is have our liquid white and it's a Bob Ross product. Now, in order to get it on the canvas, I like to shake it up and then whatever gets into the lid is most of the time, depending on the size of your canvas, of course, but most of the time it's up just about enough. All right, we want to spread it so very thinly that it's not very thick in one area and thin in the other. That's why we don't go dunking our brush into the can. If you dunk it into that little can, my goodness, sometimes you can get way too much paint on there, right? We've all done it. We've all done it. So after a little bit of practice, you can go right into your can and get just about enough of what you need. And I like to put it in different spots on the canvas. You can grab enough there. Different spots all over the place. And then we can mix it all up and make sure our entire canvas is wet all over the place. That's what we need. We need a wet surface in order to have all of our paints slide and blend and move all over these canvases, right? Now these Liquitex canvases are fantastic. I have not found a better canvas. And now that they've really dropped the price down to about half of what they used to be, I think the first time I did a video, they were $52. This one was 26. So I'm literally, and it wasn't on sale. It was just $26. So they've, uh, they've thought about it and maybe had not sold so many. And uh, you said, or maybe they saw all the comments that you guys had left on my Facebook post where they said, you know, if you had made it a little bit cheaper, maybe more people would buy it. And so they did, I think. Maybe we'll take credit. We'll take credit. It's your, it's your, it's your fault. Your fault. You're, you're the one that gets all the credit for them lowering the price because you commented on the Facebook page, right? I'm trying to get some of these bristles off of my canvas over here. There we go. Now that we've got our canvas all covered up with a little bit of liquid white everywhere. Watch, we're gonna test it just blindly on all four fingers. We got just about the same amount across the entire canvas. And you can look and move and go, you know what? All right, maybe it's a little bit, it's a little bit thin, like right in here, right over here. And we just go at it and blend it and push it around. You want a lot of pressure. You can hear the brush, lots of pressure on the canvas, spreading that paint very thinly across the entire section. And once we've got it thin across our entire canvas and it's all nice and uniform, then we'll be ready to go. So let's see what kind of colors we got on the palette for today. Because some of the times we forget. But we'll go through the colors that we have here. So we have our cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, our crimson from the Meaden set, uh, bright red. Then we have dark sienna, Van Dyke brown. Sorry, I got those confused. Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, then the lamp black from the Meaden set, Prussian blue, thalo blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, and titanium white. Man, I'm out of breath. Try saying all those in one long breath, right? I figure we'll do a pretty little sunset today. So we'll take our two yellow colors, and you guys have already even you've already seen the painting. I haven't even seen it. I'm literally about to make it up. However, we're gonna go. That's just where it is, I guess. Who knows? We're gonna move into slightly darker colors as we go. All right, so we're gonna take a little of our darker red. It's darker than the yellow anyway. 
put it around the edge, right? But not everywhere. Maybe we don't want it all to be the same. Maybe we want a little bit more red. See the difference? You have a little bit more of that reddish color, just the difference and then what that liquid white does and how it blends down all of those little bits into fantastic little things. Now, this crimson paint from the Meaden set, a lot wetter paint, but look at that pretty color. It's so fantastic. Oh, goodness. Just amazing. Now, here's the, the Bob Ross crimson right next to it, and you can see the difference in the two paints. Just very slightly different, but they are different. Now, we're gonna come over here with that crimson from the Meaden set, a little crimson from the Bob Ross set. Drag it down, we got a lot over there. Watch this, we'll just drag it in front of our sky and blend out that whole little area. Have this gorgeous little purpley little sunset. It's gonna be fantastic. A little of our Prussian blue, just that deepest, darkest blue color. One more time up here, and then we're gonna cover the whole side of the canvas and start to blend it out. It's gonna be fantastic. So, this is when we're gonna go wash our brush off again, because we can't do anything with all of those paints and all of those colors on our brush at the same time. So, what I have here is a very thick, very thick cup. Probably got a, an eighth of an inch thick, I'm not even kidding. It's full of uh, odorless mineral spirits to about this high up the cup. Now, the reason that we do that is so we can dunk in the bristles and then pull it out and shake the, the brush inside the cup, obviously, but in that little voided space. And that way we're not sloshing the stuff all around, right? So we just take it a little bit, even though it looks like I just dunked the whole brush in, we only dunked in a little bit, and now we're flinging off those little pieces inside of the cup, keeping it nice and clean around the house, right? Now, once you've done that, you almost have to, remember that game that you used to play in the locker room or the boys used to play, where you'd whip somebody with a towel, and you go, whoosh, and like try to whip them? That's what you have to do into your trash can. Whip it into a trash can, beat the devil of it, uh, out of it into your old beater bucket. Mine looks like that. It's just an old nasty bucket with a golf ball basket down at the bottom, and it was the only thing I had in my garage at the time. Whew. Four years later, still got the same gross bucket down there. I don't know how it's lasted this long, but it has, somehow it has. So, now we're gonna go and blend out all these gorgeous colors, start working them together, allowing our orange and yellow and reds and crimsons all to work and mix. All right, so we'll take our dry two-inch brush, just like that, into our yellow spot first, just crisscross back and forth and all it does is fill in every little single little tiny little pore of the canvas way in there and starts to have our paint slide and mix around with each other now, i don't want to go necessarily touch the blue and then go back down here so we want to make sure we're done with our kind of lighter spot and your yellow is going to disappear it's going to change color into a different color right it doesn't have to be this exact same yellow that we put out onto the palette as our final color here. You want it to mix and blend. You get all those cool little colors. Look at that. All on their own. People ask me all the time, how are you so good? Like I just, the brush does it for me. I don't know about you guys, but the, I give the brush all the credit, right? It does everything for us, at least for me. Just like that. All dependent on our pressure, right? How hard are we pushing on the canvas? How far do you want to slide all those paints over? Maybe we come over here into our darker colors. We'll start to push them back this way. Right, sliding and bringing everything together, bringing down our blue. We don't want to go so far down though that we get close to our yellow area, right? So let's crisscross this guy out. Just like that, just changes it up just a little bit. See what I mean? Just gorgeous. Now, you can see after working it, we've got all those colors on the brush again that we need to go wash off. So we'll hit the cup, just a tip of it into the cup, shake out the excess into the beater bucket. And you've got a nice clean brush, but remember, you have to dab it dry on a paper towel. You absolutely have to. Don't not do that. <laughs> okay, we're going to come back with our dryish brush back into our little lighter color. Start to mix all these little guys up. <clears throat> and the more that we mix them, the softer and softer and softer they become until you get this gorgeous sky that you can literally go all the way across, back and forth, and not drag all of our colors every which way. And that is the best part, right? That's because they're all blended out nice and smooth and soft. There's no big thick chunks of color that can grip on the brush and streak and drag across, right? They're all smooth. So what I always say to start is use less paint, right? Less paint, less paint, because you can always add more and darken your colors up. But if you put too much dark color up there to start, 
and you start to blend it, oh boy, right? It starts to take over our whole canvas. Now, why don't we come in with a little fan brush right over here, just like that. Actually, you know what? Let's pop a little sun in there too. Got to get a little sun. So we'll get a filbert brush. I love this little technique. It very easily pops a little perfect circle right into our sky, right? So right on the tip of the brush, don't need the back side, just the front side. And then we're going to take the front side and pop it right out there into the brightest part of our sky, all the way flat. So the bristles go flat against the canvas. And then we spin it. And if we can keep the point, the handle of the brush right in the middle of the circle, then the bristles will spread out and create this gorgeous little sun or moon or whatever you want to call it out there. Just so super easily. Push it against the canvas all the way. And then rotate, right? Rotate the brush. That's how I used to do it. I used to grab it and then I would spin the brush around its own self like that. And then we figured out if you can push it in and spin it and keep the brush in the center, guess what? You get a pretty perfect little circle without ruining your brush, right? So, very cool, very easy. Now let's grab our little fan brush. Doesn't matter the size. People ask me the size all the time. It doesn't matter. Whatever is easiest for you, right? I like this big giant Bob Ross brush, which is funny because this is a number six fan blender, right? And compared to a number 14 of the GAC Doctor, they're about the same size. So, which is why I always say it doesn't matter what size you have. You have an eight, you get a 12, you get a 14, you got a six, you got a four, whatever it is, use it. All right, we're gonna load up the paint onto the brush just by wiggling it down through like that. And maybe we'll come back in here and let's just pop in just the most gorgeous, this little bits of clouds, just popping back in there. Don't touch our little sun, moon, whatever it is. Just throw our paint right onto there, mushing it. You see how I did that? I spun the brush, I was twisting it, I was turning it the whole time, rotating the brush in between my fingers to get all these crazy little bits as it spins off, right? Now you can go back to your two inch brush or your one inch brush, whatever's more comfortable for you. And we're just using the corner. We're not using the whole brush, right? Just the corner of it. You can see if we put the palette down that there's a whole bunch of brush underneath here that's not contacting the canvas. Just the corner bits. And we start to mix them up and we pull them down and we mix them and we pull them and we mix them. The more that we mix, the more they're gonna start to turn into the colors that are underneath. And so that's when we start to base it off of our eyeballs and go, okay, you know what? It's gonna look better if this was a bit darker back here. So maybe I'll mix it up a bit more with those colors, turn it into more of the sky, right? Push some of the sky backwards. And now our clouds just got very dark with all those colors back there compared to their very bright self out here, right? All depends on what you want yours to look like. So I must say that 50 times in the middle of a, in the, in the show, 50 times, not even kidding. Whatever you want yours to look like is what it's going to look like, right? Take our little soft little cloud out there. Doesn't even need to be very big, doesn't need to be very thick, doesn't need to be very bright, right? But we do need a lot of paint in order for all that white to stand out. So if you have a bright area or you want a brighter section of cloud around your little sunny area, you just have to add more paint and less what? What's that one, that second P of Paint with Josh, right? We always talk about the three P's of Paint with Josh and that is Number one, the amount of paint that we put on the canvas. Two, the amount of, I'm about to say it for you, pressure, thank you for commenting. Pressure, right, the amount of pressure that we push. And what's that last and final P, the most vital P of Paint with Josh? Practice, gotta have practice. If you don't have practice, how can you expect to be good? You're just gonna go out there and be perfect right on your first go? If that's the case, sign me up for a class with you because that's what I wanna come do. I wanna be perfect right off the bat. Now let's, let's go in with a little bit darker color of cloud. And let's say we mix up a bit of our crimson right on the same fan brush too. Bit of the crimson, bit of the blue, a little touch of the black. We'll just mix it up right here and make this nasty dark color, right? We don't wanna go too blue because we've got our yellow in our sky. It wants to be pretty much more crimson than crimson and black anyway than anything else. Just a little touch of blue in there. Now we don't need a whole 10 ton of color on the brush. Look at how much paint we can get off the brush just by pushing real hard and wiping it, right? Or wiping it off. We don't need that much because the stuff is so dark that it's really going to stand out with just the teeniest, tiniest amount, right? Come back again. 
with the brush, you can see it's all one color uniformly. Now watch when we get done with this darkness, we'll only use a little tip corner of that brush. All right, we'll come out here and we'll start to mix up all this darkness back here. A little bit of dark, stormy cloud. Are ye stormy clouds out here? And start to mix and blend and mix and blend until you like how it looks. If you want it to be a little bit softer, keep mixing it in, mixing it, mixing it until, again, it is what you want it to be. Now you got that little shadow in the back. Very cool. Now we can take another fan brush, since that one's all dirty and nasty, and we can take it and fill this one up with some clean white paint like this. Maybe pop one more little section of cloud right back in there into that shadowy spot. Boom! Just pop it in, right? See how we covered most of our shadow? We're leaving those couple little areas, maybe a little tuft right there where it's a little dark. You don't have to cover the whole thing, and you don't want to. You don't want to. If you cover all of it, then by goodness, you've got no more depth, and it's all just one color nothing no shadows no details and anything very cool very cool little painting right now let's mix up some colors because we all know the three dark colors that josh likes to mix in order to create a deep dark shadowy mixture right we all should know at least so if you think you know type it in the comments section of whatever platform you're watching on right now it could be facebook could be youtube could be tiktok could be instagram Type it into whatever comment section you're watching right now. The three colors are blue, black, and crimson. You're right. You were correct. Now, let's come in. We're going to scrape up a whole big bunch of that dark paint that we just mixed up. And let's just pop in this ginormous mountain back there, just wherever he wants to be. All we're worried about is what? Do we care about what happens down here? Do we care at all what happens underneath the tip top of our mountain? No, we don't care. We don't care at all what's going on down there. All we're worried about is the top edge, the line right there, that top little line, right? If that's nice and crisp and clean, no caffeine, then we know we'll be good to go, right? A couple little bits, little things. Now we're gonna take up right to the edge, Scrape the paint. If you have too much paint on the canvas, it's going to grow too far. Some of the times we can use it and deposit it in other spots. Literally, like you can do whatever you want. It can look however you want. Let's take a little bit more. Come back in here, man. We got a second little peak back there. Pop it down, right? A lot of pressure, mushing it off, bending the knife, putting my finger here so it doesn't break. Really mushing it on there, right? Because this is not a point where you need details. This is just some deep background shadow. So we're going to take our one inch brush, looks just like this. And I come up in here and just based off our pressure, look at this, how far do you want the thing to go? You want it to slide all the way off? Or do you want it to stay back in here and be nice and tight? All right? Go real far, a lot of pressure. You want it to stay in here, nice and tight, little pressure. All up to us, right? We're pulling in different directions, pulling down this way on half the mountain pulling the other half of the mountain down this way, and that way we'll have we'll create this little ridge automatically that we don't even have to do anything with, right? Just poof, all of a sudden, just like that. Now, these guys back here, maybe we don't touch them too much. They're very deep, dark in the shadows, right? Maybe they come straight down, who knows? A little cliff action back here. But you can't just pull straight down on everything. Maybe this guy, we came, a little bit more pressure, see us bending the bristles, slide it down through there, right? Now, all of a sudden, we've connected these two bits right here. Just touch my own mountain. <laughs> Boop. Slide that little fingerprint out there too. And here you can make a little, like a little smiley face of a valley. Who knows what's going on? All right, take our backside. Maybe we pull this guy off here. And start sliding him more and more and more horizontally. So pulling him down. All right, but we can't all pull him one direction the whole time. You have to take it and turn it at some point. So maybe we have a little ridge going down this way. Maybe it pops up over here. Who knows, right? You never know what it's gonna look like until you actually do it. So try it, do it, and uh, see which kind of shape you like. What's your favorite? Go from there, right? Very cool. Now, we need to mix up a few more little things, right? We need to get a little bit of snow. So I have a bit of our phthalo blue, that brighter color blue, about double, maybe triple 
the white, because we grabbed a lot of blue right there, right? You don't want to have it deep, dark blue furthest away. Our deep, dark blues are for the foreground. Light blues farthest away. A little bit of our dark color, little teeny tiny bit, I'm telling you. Otherwise, you'll make it too dark, right? You can't have it be beautiful sky blue out there. You have to have it kind of dullish, bluish gray, which is what this dark color adds to it as we scrape it up like that. Right now, we're going to come in, wipe off the knife on either side, scrape so we have a fair amount, and then we're going to come off the, the back half just very lightly, right? See the angle of the knife? I'm almost hitting the handle. I am. I'm dragging the handle on the thing. Look at how many stains of paint are on the bottom of this handle just from the way that we slide and hit the canvas, right? Maybe over here. Actually, you know what? Ah, uh, that'd be so cool. You know what? Oh, let's do... Let's save the shadows because I think I want to do something cool over there. I think I want to do something really cool. We're going to pull these guys down like this, but I got to do the I got to do the highlights first, and then we're going to come in with the shadows. It's going to be awesome. So we normally, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really matter which way you do it unless you have a plan like we do in this case. And in this case, we might want to do something different, All right? Pop a little bit down in there. Now, we have to go mix up a bit of white. Can't just take your white and right up there from the tube. So grab a little bit of white, and I'm talking about the smallest little bit of blue where we grabbed and smushed our knife out on, right? Teeniest, tiniest amount. And that way it stays sort of white, right? Especially if you don't have any blue on your knife. There we go. Now, we don't want it to be pure white, but we don't want it to be blue either, right? So it's gotta be sort of whitish. <laughs> you get white-ish, sort of bluish. A little bit of both-ish. And we're gonna come up here, we're gonna grab it, scooping it up, same way, big, chunky, nasty bit on there. Let it roll off. You gotta go fast, right? All we're doing, dragging the knife along the canvas, letting it slide its way down, right? all the way down the ridges. Which way you wanna go? Maybe we come in here, back in there, slide it in, right? Doesn't all have to be the straightest line. You see what that little blue stripe did for us? created like a whole nother little glacial valley. Just fantastic. Come up here with our white paint over there. Whip it down, Shoo! slide it down. Doesn't all have to be the same, all right? Never, never always has to be the same. Now, we come up here, same little bit of white, letting it drag, letting it grip wherever it wants. Not trying to force it. If you try to force it, it's not gonna go in there. It's gonna be a pain in your butt. Just let the canvas take it. Wherever it wants, it's gonna grab. All right, wherever it doesn't want to be, guess what? That's where it doesn't want to be. Just like that, coming sliding down. We're gonna have to make up some more snow. Long, fast strokes. It helps, I'm telling you it helps. It helps. Now, let's make up a bit more of that color, a little bit more of our white, little teeny scrape of that blue. Gonna mix them up into the same little bit that we had before, right underneath, right there. Again, it's not pure white. You gotta have that little touch of blue in there. Otherwise, you're gonna miss it. You will miss it. A couple little teeny tiny bits on the top there, leaving some of that blue underneath. And who knows, maybe we come out here, whip this guy down like that. Right? Little things getting darker and darker as they go away from our sun. You don't need to have so much paint over here. Make sure it looks cooler, but you don't have to have so much. You don't have to. Now, what if we came back with our shadowy bits and then off the side down here, we started whipping in a couple of these little guys. We we'll picked up a bit of our darker color as well, which is fine because that's what we're going to need eventually. All right, and then maybe we get one more little piece of mountain in there. Pop a little bit off of this guy, sliding him back. Very light pressure here. There's too much paint, right? Even if you came across it like this, you could literally scrape up the paint off of there. It's too much. So what we're going to do is come back with a bit of our darker color. All right, lay down some of that dark shadowy mix for it to blend in with. And all of a sudden it's already looking better. Already looking better. Now we're gonna come in and mix up this whole area anyway. All we need is a bit of color down in here. It's nothing crazy. We don't need every single bit of brightness way out there. Woo, I like that. That's very, oh, you know what? Just a little, a little touch. Oh, I like that right there, it's cool. If we pop this guy out here too. Bang, really shot him up that way. Oh, I like it, right? The more you change your angles, look at this, come right over our shadow that way, and change our whole bit of mountain up, just like that. 
And there is no right or wrong way to do it, right? There is no right or wrong way. So don't ever be told that there is. You send them over to old Uncle Paint with Josh and I'll tell him, I'll tell him, don't you worry. Okay, now we're gonna wipe off our knife, throw it over to the side, grab up our two inch brush. And from here, we're gonna very lightly start swiping up so lightly in the direction that we came down, right? So we're gonna go up. If you came down like this with your knife, go up. Very light, look at the difference between these two areas. Very soft little details. Ooh, super textury, right? Sometimes it looks neat, but if you want your mountains to look further away, you gotta soften them just a little touch. A little bit, not getting rid of all the details, right? Just three hairs and some hair. Bob was not joking when he said that. Like it's literally the lightest touch you can possibly touch another thing. And I liken it to if you have a sleeping baby and you just wanna go check on them and just touch the side of their face just so soft. Because if you wake them up, we can't paint anymore. We gotta go back to babysitting, right? So, so soft. Just, if you think you're touching it soft, touch it softer. <laughs> softer. Now, you go from ultra soft touch to ultra hard pressure. As we're gonna take our brush and just start pushing in, mixing it up. Instantly starts to mist, right? We can't figure out what's happening inside that little area. Maybe it comes up in here. Maybe it comes down over here, pop, 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 right? Started up here, came down, up, down, not just straight across the bottom. Don't do that. Don't let me catch you doing that. I'll be like, um, no, don't do that. We're gonna come back very lightly, softening it again. All right, so you can kind of blend it back up into that mountain. A little bit of misty fogginess. Now, what happened to this side? We can't come like this the same way we were going with our mountain, right? And as you can see, we were shaping it each way, just like a clock would be. So if we came over here, we have to start going this way, right? Using just the corner, tapping it in, coming back, tap it in, come back up, tap it back down, come back up, tap it back down, over a little bit, come back up, move over a little bit, tap it back down, come back up, move over a little bit, tap it back down, over and 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 over again. Doesn't even matter if you come up above your mountain like that. Sometimes it looks really cool. Just make it a little misty and foggy. Ooh, <laughs> a bit of something coming off the thing, right? Now we'll come in and we'll mix it up, but we don't want to grab any of this. This is very thick paint that will streak very far if we try to grab it and pull it. We just want to get right up underneath it where our little misty, foggy action was and mix it up. Mix, 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 mix. Now, come back in for the final touch, going back in the same way, loading it back. Now coming back from this direction, flowing in that way. We got a very soft, spooky little mountain out there. Now let's come in back to our dark color, but we don't have enough. So let's come back and get a little bit of our dark, our black color, our crimson and the blue, the blue, black and crimson mix, the BBC of PWJ. <laughs> so blue, black and crimson mixed up over and over into this, like over mix it into this dark color. So you can't tell what it is, what the mix is. It just looks black, right? As long as it looks black, we'll be in good shape. Now we come back with our darker colored fan brush. We still haven't washed yet. We go into that dark paint, just load it up, wiggle it down in between all the bristles, kind of spreads them apart, fills them all in between with paint. And then they're very sharp. And go down and cut down my easel, right? We're gonna go chop some wood. <laughs> Just like that. Big old ax. <laughs> Come down on it. But you gotta have a nice sharp little brush like that in order to leave sharp little details, right? Now as we come up here, look at the tip tops of those trees. Pop, 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 pop. See what I did? And we came down like that. We stayed in our misty area, leaving about one inch, about one inch, about an inch and a half over here, about one inch right here in between the trees, the tree tops anyway, and the smoky mist in the background, right? So we came down over here now, hopping them in. All we're doing is just filling in little bits. Don't even have to go all the way to the edge, you really don't. Really not necessary. Now watch, look at the brush now. Look at how fat and like split apart and they're all weird, right? They're not like an ax blade anymore. And so what we need to do is come back in Wiggle it down again, which again, separates all the bristles, filling them all with paint, making it nice and sharp. Just like that, right? Shoo, super sharp. Now we'll come back in and let's pop in just a few more. 
little guys back here. They just start coming. Ooh, they just want to grow across the whole smash. Why not? Doesn't even matter. Honestly, doesn't even matter. Come back in here. You can do yours halfway. You can do it all the way across. You can do it wherever you want to. All right? Pop in a couple little things. Just filling in the color down around the bottom is all. Literally smashing the brush against the canvas at a downward angle. Just like that. Filling it in. Tap, 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 tap. All we gotta do, fill it in. Look at the distance it projects back there, right? Now we take our two-inch brush, just like this, flip it upside down, come in here with a little bit of pressure, and then we pull away. Once we get to the top, we don't want it to streak all the way up into the sky. Ooh, that would be bad. We don't want it, we don't want that to happen. But we do want to push it hard enough where it fills in all these little light areas. We don't want all those little bits of light shining through. We want our forest so thick that it blocks out everything. Just perfect. Right? Now, this does not look natural at all. <laughs> so we're going to take our same brush. As you can see, we only even use the edge just to get the color onto. Turn it at our downward angle. Just going to use the top corner again and just start smashing. But in and, uh, instead of going sideways like we did with this, trying to build our mountain, we're just going to tap down. Just tap down, come back up, tap down, come back up, tap down. Down, 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 down. All you gotta do, right? Coming in here, bringing it down a little bit, come back up, bring it down a little bit, maybe up a little bit higher this time, bring it down a little bit more. All up to you what you want it to look like. And all of a sudden, you tend to, it starts to uh, become difficult to see where the bottom of our forest is, right? Where is the base? Who knows? Is it down here? Is it up here? Is it up here? Is this guy, are all these sitting on a rock up on top there? And these are all down lower? Don't know until we put it in there, right? Now, our brush is getting very full with paint, but I think we can get away with just mixing up this last little bit. And all we're gonna do is just mix up that gray with the white underneath. And all of a sudden, if you just leave one little streak, you could say it's snow. You literally could. It is the most beautifulest color of snow shadow that you can get just automatically, right? We didn't do anything. We just mixed up some colors, we bashed the brush down, and then we mixed it in with this liquid white that's on the bottom of the canvas so much that it just looks like snow. A right, couple little bits here and there, a little mist, a little action. Do we have a whole nother mountain sitting down here? Is there a bit of snowy meadow? Like, what do you want to do in your painting? Because you can do 10 million things. You can do 10 million things, right? Watch this. Just like I was saying, that guy back there is sitting on a rock. So maybe we take up some of that dark color and we come up in here and we just start popping out just a little, a little some something of something, right? Just a blobby mess of darkness. It's gotta be darker than the base of our trees. And we have to come up into that lightish area, right? Where you have that little bit of mist back there. Now we're gonna take this guy and kind of shape him a little bit. Just pull him down. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm thinking about sticking some trees in front of him anyway just to make him even harder to see, right? So we do the same thing we've done, mixing up the bottom. All we're doing, crisscrossing back and forth. Shoot, this cool little bit of a rocky mess, which we don't even know that's a rock until you go and highlight the thing. So let's grab a bit of our bluish color and let's come off of the back side of this guy now because our sun is over here, right? We're running out of that blue color too. Little bits, different areas, little things, right? Nothing crazy. Back with our white snowy mixture. Maybe a couple little pieces of this guy just get lit up wherever they could. Just like that, right? Don't need a whole lot of paint. If you have too much, it's actually gonna hurt you. Little things, remember, we're gonna mist it up anyway. The majority of all the details get lost, especially around the bottom. So come back very lightly, very lightly. Right? And you can see instantly, already looks better. We come in here, gonna mist it up just a little bit, right? We don't wanna cover up everything. And in fact, maybe we can get a bit of white paint onto our brush. There we go. Really make sure there's a difference between the rock and whatever else we put underneath. Same thing, let's push it back, push it up, push it back this way, mix it up. A lot of pressure, lots of pressure. All right, and as we come in like that, we'll have this little cloud at the bottom of our little mountain, poof, just added a whole nother piece of 
depth and detail, right? We'll come back in here, get a little bit more paint onto the brush, and maybe now we're getting close enough where we can start to see there's a couple little trees. Maybe one of them lives right there. Maybe another guy lives right there. Poof! Right in front of our mountain back there, a little rock, whatever we're gonna call that little thing. And as we come up and start slapping against the canvas, you can see the brush leaves little things. And the more we go, the more we're pushing on there and eventually using your whole bit of brush down around the bottom, contacting the canvas to make all of our little base shape branches, right? All they are is a shadow. It's gonna look sloppy. It's not gonna look right when you get done, right? It's not gonna look right because you're not used to doing it this way. You're gonna look at it and you go, oh my God, what have I done? That's exactly what you want, right? You want a blobby bit of a tree shape. That's all you need little blobby bit back there and then we can decide how far do our little blobby trees come down right where's the last little branch going to come out does he sit right there does he have a little bit of land underneath him this way perhaps there's a bit of shadow so we'll pull down beneath All right little piece off this way and we'll kind of blend it in we'll figure out what we're going to look like right then we can always go back and add snow and stuff. So it's all good. Doesn't really matter. That's the fun part about painting guys. It doesn't really matter what we're doing. All of a sudden pfft, Nice little thing, sat right up here in our foreground. Still got the depth change because that light line right there between our dark and our darker color, you get that bit of light off in the distance, which we're gonna wanna keep. Don't lose it, right? Let's put a couple more trees in back here though. And in which case, we're gonna need to make up some more color. I don't know why I never can make up enough. A little bit more of our three favorite colors. And what three colors are those? Type them into the comments right now. What are those three color mix? Doesn't matter what platform you're watching on, what are the three colors that Paint With Josh uses to make a deep dark mixture? The deepest of darkest mixtures. Type it into the comments for me. Let's see, and if you don't know, you gotta go check the comments for it. Let's pop a guy in over here, but much bigger. Much bigger. <laughs> Taller than our mountain, right? It's about that tall. Straight across. And then we're gonna fill him up. Oh, he's gonna be a fatso, this guy. Oh, he's a tree, right? We're gonna come in here, we're gonna start to tap. Little teeny taps at first. And again, they start to look strange until you can get that little bit where you start to nail it. And the more you come down, the more we start pushing with our brush. And we start popping in. And I'm only gonna do the left side of the tree just to show you, right? Because it's harder to do both sides. You can't really see everything. So what I'm doing is contacting the the trunk in the middle with the corner of the brush. All right, we're getting a lot of paint onto it. Coming in here, we're contacting the trunk. We're letting the brush go out and slap. Can you see that on there? Just like that. Like the brush is literally stuck to the canvas. I'm not even holding it. Bop, pull it away. Literally, do that 30 times. Bang, bang, boom. You want it nice and thick. Remember, that's only one half of the tree. Look at how much paint is right there. That's a whole 10 ton of paint. Now we're gonna do this side again. Contact, push out. Contact a little bit more, a little bit more out, a little bit more out, a little bit more out. Rotate the brush a little bit more out. All right, and you start pushing your little branches until your tree looks however you want it to look. Doesn't have to be the most beautiful, doesn't have to be the most symmetrical tree you've ever seen, but what does it have to do? If it's gonna sit closer than these guys back here, can you tell me what does it have to do? Does it, do you want it to sit up higher than these trees or do we want it to sit down lower to make it seem like it's more in the foreground? Can you tell me in the comments? In my head, I'm gonna tell you it's lower, right? If it sat lower down here in the front, then it makes it look like it's closer to us, right? You push the top up, no matter how tall it is, depends on where the base is, make it look much further away. Now, let's go wash that brush off. Get some of that color off of that mean old brush. And that thing has done a good job for us right here. That is, you have done well. I had to give you an old bath. Give you a bath and then I'm gonna load you back up with paint. So again, let's mix up one or maybe, let's mix up enough for maybe one or two more trees. All right, a couple more trees. So blue, black, and crimson. And this time I grabbed a little bit of the, the Prussian blue as well. So just add that extra little bit, that little pop, right? It's all about those little differences in color like we talk about all the time. Been talking about them for years. 
the DIC differences in color. <laughs> oh, I have fun. We have fun up here. We have a lot of fun on this channel. Now we're going to come back to our brush. We're going to load it up again, streaking it down, right? You don't want it to be all globby, though. So go back over, a little bit of pressure on there, load it in, spread the bristles apart, slide in between, just like that. Maybe we'll come back over here. You know what? Maybe we had a really small little guy. Well, I mean, he's a giant tree, but he doesn't live very close, right? Come back, we're going to start tapping up onto the branch, just a little bit at the beginning. And then the more we go, and look at the angle of my brush. It's almost nearly horizontal, which makes the bristles nearly vertical, right? And we're just slapping it, slap, 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 slap. The more we push outward, the bigger our branches get, right? So same thing. If we start up here, little teeny tiny taps, and then the more we go, I'm still not even gonna use the whole brush, but the more we go down, the more we push out, which makes it extend. And then we can go back and sort of fill in where you want it to be. But don't have it be too big. Don't have it be as big as these guys for sure. Now we're gonna come back with our one inch brush again, taking the sun going way back there, right? Pulling it back. See how much pressure we use to pull that darkness? A Little bit of pressure on this side. And then you can go back and fill it up with snow. Maybe there's a little ridge in between these two guys that come down, right? We can all, we, we'll, 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 we'll decide when we get there. But a little bit of our color, slide it back, very softly. A little further tree off in the distance. Now let's put one more right here in the front. We'll do a little five tree painting, It'd be very cool. You heard of one tree hill? This is five tree hill, it's five times better. Okay, we're gonna come back over here. Now let's do one sort of in between. We don't want it to be all the way in the foreground like this guy, right? Which he needs to be, hold on, it looks like he's just floating. Both directions though, don't try to cheat and just do it in one direction. Pull it out in both ways. Leaving these little dark streaks each time separates our land, shows us where we need to put our highlights and stuff. Now we don't want it to be as foreground as this so we can't come down that far. Maybe we come down this, maybe we kind of split the difference, right? We'll split the diff on those guys. Doesn't need to be as big either. And we'll come up in here. Right? Just about right where I said, right in the middle. Oh, look at that. That's the dangers you get when you teach a live tutorial. I'm gonna leave that in the video too. I don't care. You think I care? Watch this. Watch this. This actually might look cool, like a little ridge that the, oh my God, it is swear I did not, I didn't plan this, it's a total accident, but watch this, if we take them and we pull them out, right, it's gonna be like a little shadowy ridge that that thing is sitting on top of. It's gonna look really cool. But like I said, let's not try to drag the brush across. It's about halfway in between the base of this and the base of that's where we wanna end. Now we'll go back, we're gonna load it up, and should we do a downward facing guy? All we're gonna do is tap in with the corner, right? And then we move a little to the left, a little to the right. To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Tapping in between each one. See how the trees start to come together? Now, let's come out here. Pop, 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 pop. They don't need to be humongous. You want to have some dark spaces in there. Right? You got to have some places for the critters to live. There goes my laundry. I'm go finish doing that. Come down on the other side. We don't want them to all be the same size. Very cool, just a big old mess. Big old dark mess of stuff. A couple little crazy branches hanging out. And the point is, there's a lot of texture. There's a lot of little fingers on these trees and that way they're gonna grip onto our foreground stuff and it's gonna be awesome. Okay, we're gonna take our bit right here. Let's see if we can't save that little ridge in the snow, no? Maybe, maybe by, by the way we highlight it. But we'll have to pull this guy off this way. A little bit higher up here, down. And then higher up here, blend it out. You can always go back and add white to brighten up your snow, right? It's not gonna be this dark thing. Look at that. And we did them all in different order, right? It doesn't matter what order you went in or that you have to start from the back and go to the front. It doesn't matter. So don't tell anybody, or don't let anybody tell you that it does. You do whatever you wanna do, right? There's no nothing about it. So. Let's clean off some brushes. And while I'm doing that, you guys are gonna tell me where you're watching from. And what is your favorite soft drink? What's your favorite soft drink? Let me know. Mm.
What do I mean by soft drink? Soda, pop, fizzy drink. What's your favorite fizzy soda pop drink? All right, now comes the fun part. Now we're gonna take our brush. We're gonna grab up a little bit of white snow onto our brush down here. Maybe get the teeniest little bit of that yellowish, orangish color in it, just the smallest bit though. We don't wanna turn it into the same color. We just wanna have a bit of it. Maybe we come out here and we start lighting up little places. Doesn't have to be so super bright. Right, throw our little bit of shadow off that side. Just let it blend back. Doesn't even need to be detailed. Right, drag him back into the tree, downward and up like that, down and up, right? We're making that little valley back inside there. And we get a little bit of that lighter color over here, just a touch, right? Gotta leave a little shadow, can't have it all be the same. Can't have it all be the same. Come back over here, connect back up. Don't wanna have our shadow be too big, too bright, too deep. And you don't wanna have this be too steep of an angle. You want it to be very shallow, just like that. Very cool. Take these guys, pull them off in the other direction, sliding it down, drag our trees, uh, uh, snow up into the tree like that, kind of scoots it up underneath. Very cool, very cool. Come in here, maybe we had a little touch back in there, maybe a little bit over here, just a small little bit of light. Come down through there. Nothing too crazy. We gotta make sure we leave our trees little shadow for our trees. Gonna leave those guys back behind the sun. And then, bring this guy up maybe a little bit more. Very cool. Soft little things happen back there in the night. In the night. A little bit of blue always helps to create a shadow. Versus just having that deep dark color, you get that little bit of blue in there. And then what we'll do is we'll shrink our snow back across the top just by dragging the white a little bit of pressure to wherever we want it to be right and then we stop just like that same over here same everywhere very cool guys that's very cool now again we've got our light side we've got our darker side don't need to do anything to it but now we've got to make up a bit of snow just right here onto our brush and so what we're going to do Let's get a little of our liquid white, and you can see how drippy the liquid white is. Look at this. Boop, drips right off of the thing, right? It's so wet and slimy, and that causes the paint to become thinner. And when the thinner paint contacts the thicker paint, it's going to stick to that thicker paint. And so that's what we need, some deeper, darker blue shadows than they were back here, right? So maybe take a little bit of our darkness, just a little touch. Bang, just like that. A little bit of that blue, kind of dab it in on the brush, making sure all of our white on the brush is blue. We don't need it to be any sh uh, light on the side, right? So we'll take all of our blue paint, and let's just go off the back of these guys. Let's go off the right side, why not? And we'll kind of just start smacking at the canvas. Same thing, look at my brush. Pretty much flat, which makes the bristles pretty much vertical. And as we slap in with just the corner, we start seeing little things, right? Now, off the back side of this guy, the whole back of these dudes are gonna be in the shadow of the sun. We're only gonna see a little bit of light on the front. So, tap a little bit off of our backside. And then we'll catch a little bit of light in the front, a little bit of light on the front of that guy. It should be all square, all squaresies. What we're trying not to do though is cover up all that dark color, right? You don't need to cover up every single bit of the darkness. Don't do that. It doesn't have to be a blue tree. You want it to be a dark tree with a couple little blue spots, all right? And those little blue spots are just the shadowy sides that are just bright enough for us to see. All the other darkness are the deep, dark areas where the critters like to live way down inside there, right? Now, coming back, a little bit of our blue, a little bit of our darker color, Right down in there, onto the brush again. Same thing, kind of mixing with that liquid white each time, keeping it nice and sloppy and wet. I'll come over here, off the back side of this guy. Keeping my brush out the way as much as I can. The angle is very important though, because you gotta slap at it and then move as you go down, trying not to hit every piece. Don't wanna cover every piece of dark. Don't get every single thing out there. That's not what you want. Now, off the back side of this guy, watch the angle is very important of the brush, right? As we go down, I'm not going like this, right? I have to continue to move down at that same angle, slapping into it, 
couple little dark sides. Don't need every single piece to be the same. Now wipe off that brush, go back, get some more liquid white, and then get some white paint on the brush. You're gonna have a lot of fun. A lot of fun. <clears throat> a little bit more of our liquid white, about the same amount. And drop it over here into our white section. Grab a snip bit of that little bit of our yellow like we had back here in our snow. Just the tiniest bit. I'm talking about you can't even barely even tell. You barely even tell that it's even on there. All right, we're going to come over here. We're going to tap onto the left side and then start stacking up. Little bits, little bits, little bits on there. Not trying to cover every single piece, right? You don't have to cover everything. Come back in here. Left side, now we're only gonna come about halfway down and then boop, stop, because we're not gonna see anymore. It's all covered by the other guy, right? Not gonna see every single thing. So, come over here, tap, start smacking up at it. Don't cover all the darkness, I'll come to your house. You cover up all the dark and I'll tell you, look, this is why it didn't look good because you, you covered up all the dark bits, right? Smack it in. Sometimes we go a little bit across our shadowy side, not all the way. Lights, shadows, deep original dark, right? Come back over here, finish these last two guys, and we'll be all good, guys. It's going to be a really cool little painting. Really fun. I can't wait to see your guys' versions of these paintings and these trees. And I hope with the angle of the brush and smacking it like I've been showing you, you get those cool little things. And I just hope you don't overdo it and do too many. Don't do too much. You do too much, you're not gonna like it. All right, the more we go in, the more we start tapping out. Tapping out, tapping out, tapping out. Boom! Hit it out the park. That is a pretty, pretty little painting, you guys. Pretty, pretty, pretty little painting, if you ask me. Very cool. Soft, gentle, easy, easy little painting. Easy, easy, peasy, lemon squeezy, man. Fantastic. Finish our edge right down there, fantastically. Guys, this one's really pretty. I mean, we could do 10 tons. Of, you could add another tree in the front. You could add a whole big spiky tree, but I really like the beauty and, and gentleness and softness of this one. It's just very much like cold. It's cold back there. Stupid. Well, guys, this one turned out fantastic. I can't wait to see your versions of it. Please send them into facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. And until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. And bye-bye.